here live on Lead Chess and Twitch. Sladgy on Twitch. Please follow our channel. International Master William Pascal, aka Sparkle Horse, on the Lead Chess website. Here we are. That's me. I'm here along with Panda, our mascot. Hey guys, what's up? Good to see you. Got um, <clears throat> a little bit of lag here as we get started. Bobby Sakamano, 1716, character from Seinfeld. And uh, the bane of my my stream. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, Bob? Bob challenged me to 7 plus 3. We're going to be playing, and if I can remember this for one day, for the first game, we're going to be playing unusual openings today, trying to play different stuff that I normally don't essay. Essay. What's up, Bob? You're the only one here. Is there anyone in here? This is great. Welcomes. <clears throat> My lag is kicking into high gear here. I accidentally um, opened up a program I didn't mean to. Hopefully that'll that'll stop. As we get started, <clears throat> just a moment. A personal lesson for me and three lurkers. All right, it looks good. Hey, Bob. All right, Bob. We're gonna get started. Accepting this challenge here, um, probably I need to like perfect my settings on on the OBS, the Streamlabs OBS. Though starting an extra program didn't help. We've got a ping of 150, which is slower than it should be. 250 now. It's, it's playing games with me. All right, we'll be able to take the seven plus three challenge, no problem. But I am encountering a little bit of lag. <clears throat> this is normal chess. Um, today's not really a good day for chess 960. If anybody wants to challenge me to chess 960, probably Mondays and Friday mornings would be better. Play a game or two of chess 960 there. Tennis pal just disappeared. But I am taking the, the subscribers first. So we're gonna get started now. Um, I'm gonna play e4, but then we'll mix it up on the second move. Don't necessarily have to play a strange move on move one. Just uh. Want to play stuff that I normally don't play. If e4, e5, maybe the Vienna game with knight to c3, or some kind of opening that I don't really know very well. I want to experiment. Now, against the Karo Khan, it's not that easy. There's the hillbilly attack. We could always try that. Um, so called hillbilly attack after bishop c4. Very unusual line. Played by Simon Williams. Um, he's the only titled player I, I, I know. Um, trying it. What else can we do? Knight c3 and something like knight c3 and queen f3, one of those type of things. Most commonly white plays d4, of course. Bob playing the Karo Khan here. Welcome everyone to the stream. We've got Bob, Clash Kid, JCS, Good to see you guys. B3, a good suggestion for another alternative line. Bob lives in the south, but he's not a hillbilly. You don't live in the hills, in other words. The land, the land of the mountains. You're more in the center of the state, huh, Bob? D5, now... Yeah, I was talking about queen f3. Let's give this a whirl. It's... How to describe this move? Some sort of very rare hybrid. Um, actually, not a hybrid. More like just a rare sideline. I'm sure that I've encountered it on occasion. It misplaces the queen and puts the, puts the pressure on d5. Black has really three options. Giving up the center. Playing you know, to support d5, or just switching pawn structures to d4. And I find that most people don't go for d4 who play the Karo Khan in French because they're extending their pawn chain to like a new a new type of structure that they're not necessarily like accustomed to. So 
I mean, myself, when I'm black as well, I'm not really that fond of pushing d4 when I've got this normal situation where my pawns would stay on the white squares. Bob decides to open it up, <clears throat> which, um, which might be appropriate. I mean, my queen could be misplaced. Could be misplaced on f3. <clears throat> of course, we could just suck it up and play queen takes e4. Handing him a tempo, but this feels more thematic. Good to see you guys. Clash Kid's been here a lot since uh, the last few streams. JCS. <clears throat> Anonymous is here, a.k.a. Bale, Baleful. Now g6 looks slow. That early pressure on f7, this is starting to look like... <laughs> it's reminding me of a game with International Master Asa Hoffman. Um, I had some blitz sessions with Hoffman, and he's an old hustler from New York City. He plays the Dunst opening knight c3 a lot. The f7 looks kind of tender here. We'll develop another piece. So I just know g6 might be a little too luxurious for black, objectively. You can certainly play knight h6. What would happen after knight h6? Okay, now we can try to wreck his king side with, with bishop takes f7 check and g4. Um, I mean, in a vacuum, g4 itself looks strong, doesn't it? Hmm. This isn't too well thought out for black. I mean, do I have anything better? Sorry, guys, I'm suffering from the seasonal allergies here. I'll try to mute the mic when I lose my lose my mind with this allergy stuff, but um, <clears throat> my eyes are watering and I want to sneeze really badly. <laughs> Not really good for, for live streaming. I don't know about Bishop F5, Bob, that seemed like a, a very ill-prepared idea. Um, <clears throat> only move that doesn't lose material right away bishop e6 I mean I, I have arguably like weakened my structure with g4 but his position looks really really destitute knight g5 he can cover uh oh no, no I don't know I mean knight g5 queen d5 Knight c5, queen. He always has this queen d5 defense of some kind. You know, maybe if he could sack his pawn on b7, it wouldn't be unreasonable. There's also queen c3. Does that just win out of hand? You know, once again, queen c3, queen d5, this resource seems to save him in all variations. Um, in this case, it would be like that weakness on the diagonal burning me. So it's not so easy to, to blow him away here. Um... Well, I guess knight g5 just doesn't even work. I mean, queen d5, I'd have to trade on d5, and then ed, and he's not even in trouble there. Knight c5, queen d5, you know, I could grab his b7 pawn. But at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm losing, uh, losing time here. Could play queen c3, queen d5, d3, e5, knight f3, but he can defend e5, he's just holding his position together. So I don't see a forced win. I mean, there's just no, no forced win here. I just have to play logically and, and try to outplay him strategically, I guess. 
Knight c5 could grab the b7 pawn. I mean, that's about the only way I can imagine winning material. Although even knight c5, yeah, knight c5. All right, this is very materialistic. Queen d5, queen d5. Actually, queen d5, I have knight b7 right away, which is probably better than, than trading queens and fixing a structure. But it's extremely materialistic and just doesn't feel right. That's the best I come up with here, seriously. I haven't been looking at the chat, guys. Let me get the chat up. Invisible. Bob is from urban Northern California. He just lives in the South. I never heard anyone say that before, urban Northern California. All right, an app description. Feels weird to fix his pawn structure here. Knight takes b7. Okay, this is a strange position. He could check me, I'll just play king f1 or king d1. No problem with that. Actually, king f1 will drop a piece to queen b5, so that is a problem. I take it back. I mean, of course, at the end of the day, you'd have all kinds of weird possibilities. Like, I could play queen c3, I could lose the knight on b7 and then play queen c3 and f knight f6 g5 winning back a piece or something like that so who knows what could be really going on i mean this tactic on this diagonal is is just sitting there waiting to be taken advantage of he has the worst pawn structure um obviously you know but i was concerned about the knight getting trapped on b7 and obviously that's possible with his queen mining these squares on the on the fourth rank I could trade queens and play knight a5. That's like my backup variation, worst case scenario. Maybe not a bad idea objectively, because it's kind of hard to get myself out. But I'd fix his pawns majorly with that. On the other hand, what the heck do you do if you don't do that? Maybe I should get out while the getting's good. This is pathetic. Bobby even pre-moved, like he knew that I was gonna take. But I guess that's an easy pre-move. We gotta narrow it down to one choice. Now a second pawn. Knight takes c6, rook c8, knight b4. a5. Knight takes d5. Rook takes c2. I'm really getting materialistic there. Is it worth it? Knight takes c6, rook takes c8, knight b4, a5, knight takes d5, rook takes c2. I guess I'd better off, I'm better off not opening up this position too much. But he has compensation. The bad plan is better than no plan at all. Isn't that what they say? Let's just go back. He's got a lot of compensation here. I didn't play this right. I mean, it looks like a great pawn down position for black. Not a good start. I feel like I'm playing chess 960. Failed to find anything tactically. It just wasn't there. I mean, there just wasn't anything there. I wasted all my time looking for something that's not there. Couldn't find it. Interesting suggestion of, of JCS to play B4. Obviously not, not really a good idea at the moment. Bob's really well coordinated now. I fixed his pawn structure. He's got a massive lead in development. And then he chose to play rook f8, which I don't know. I think I would have castled there. I mean, the king in the, in the center is fine, but it's almost like an attacking position if he castles and puts his rooks on on the f and e lines. Maybe he forgot he could still castle. It's one of those things. <laughs> I've got the three second increments, so I'll try not to lose on time. But I think I would actually not mind being black here. I mean, I, I don't mind. I would prefer to be down a pawn with the initiative than be up a pawn like I am in this case. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Bob um, putting pressure on here. I just failed to find a good continuation. All right, window, stay open, please. Thank you. Your tennis, Paul. 
You finally get to talk here. Well, nobody was stopping you, I hope. Um, you're welcome to do so. So I let my time run out, and now I just have to make quick moves with like three second increments every move. But I think, Bob, it was a strange decision not to castle. I don't know, I keep losing this window. Why does it keep disappearing on me? Window. Don't do that anymore. 10 minute cooldown. Oh, because we had that set for new people. Maybe we had that set because we were having a lot of problems with trolls at one point. He won the under 2000 Rapid Arena, nice. Um, a little early in the in the in the morning for me for the tournaments. I'm Eastern, Eastern, European, um, Central European time. If I can just speak, knight takes g4, knight e6. Can I play this move? I mean, we're asking for trouble with this move, but my knight is just desperately stupid on b3. Bob's playing a great game. Even a5 is a good move. I talk often about how badly knights are placed on knight 3. This is no exception. Knight g4, knight e6. Then he has to play rook f7. Ooh, then I have a fork on... I just realized this just doesn't even work. He can't just play that. Um, but knight c5 looks like a reasonable move. This is sort of... One, one idea behind this move to play knight e6. Knight takes c6 is dangerous. But make Bob think. Yeah, he did play it. There's actually no refutation to knight takes c6, though. As far as I know, we're being very materialistic. For lack of a better idea, I'm going to take the pawn. We've got no development. We're, we're up two pawns for it, though. At least that's something. Material is like the most overrated fundamental principle in chess, in my opinion. Man, I'm about to flag. I'm going to take the third pawn on a5. Instead, I put my knight in the line of fire. This is probably just a blatant blunder. Now he has knight takes g4 for reals. With very strong play, knight takes g4, h takes g4, bishop takes g4. So he actually blundered there. I'm still not fully awake. That's my excuse. One of my many. The idea is to come up with as many excuses as you can. Oh, I think I'm losing a piece. That's good. Bob. I'm losing a piece, Bob. Three pawns for a piece. The reality is I have three pawns for a piece after knight takes e5. In a very passive position. <sighs> nice game, Bob. Bob must have been practicing today. Extra sharp. Knight a4, king... Knight a4, d4, I guess, stays alive. But I don't like it. literally staying alive. And and that's the best you can call it. I have three pawns for a piece. So I may not, this was a, a blunder by Bob. He's in time pressure. Four pawns for a piece. Now I like white better. For the first time since my most recent blunder. Four pawns for a piece is too many. Now we're just literally better. You sacked a piece. Man, Bob, nice game until the end, when the time just was too overwhelming. You're probably winning at some point. I don't know. Well, I mean, winning at least, like, practically speaking. 
Here you're plus two, according to the engine, after I drop the piece with knight f3. That was a patent blunder, um, just missing e5. The engine thought I was clearly better if I don't make that, that great move. All right, man, good game, good try, anyway. Um, we've got more challenges. I'm gonna be taking the subscriber challenges first. Infinite Flash Chess is here again. Is it intentionally your cartoon pony covers the G1 square? Let me check, I might have it. Cartoon pony. No, why is it like that? The board needs to be moved over. Sorry about that, guys. Um, don't know how it got in a position like that. Hold on a sec while we, we fix this. One moment while we correct the problem of the board. But I'm getting really bad CPU kind of lag going on. Don't like it. I got drop frames too. I don't understand what's going on with my stream. Um, the first time I've had drop frames really with the Streamlabs OBS. This is just not good. We'll have to do some troubleshooting um, between streams here. Let me check this board now. Actually, I'm like frozen here. Okay. Why is my window capture frozen? All right, let me see. I'm having some serious issues. Sorry about the technical issues here, but we're getting really bad. My first game of the day, I play around 2000 level. Bob, that's, that's very generous of you to say that. All right. The board was totally whacked out. I don't know how though, because I didn't move it since the last stream. It's very strange. Um, but thanks for picking up on that very, very deep, deep fact. Infinite Flash Chess. Pony was out of position. Canadian NM level. Oh, man. I mean, no, but it was a frustrating position, guys. Seriously. I know it sounds like excuses, but... Can you guys see the stream all right? Is it coming through? I got all kinds of weird out-of-whackness. Um, no, but I mean, it was a frustrating position. Like, it seriously seemed... Uh, like, I just kept missing the best move. G4 was best. It took me, like, a minute to find that. Then bishop b6, take, take. But in this position, I I tanked for a long time because this is... There is no, like, knockout blow here. You know, white's just better, but it's not clear, like, what even the best move is. Stockfish is actually looking at G5, threatening queen c3. It's a strange move, but it would imprison his other pieces, you know, after G5. Imprisoning the knight is like a positional solution. Knight c5 got a question mark. I had my doubts about it. You know, it wasn't as strong as the other the other moves. All right, not an easy position to play, though. Too many good choices. Baleful. I'm taking um, subscribers first here, guys. So we got this one window that just keeps closing and starting to piss me off. G5 was winning. It's all relative. Winning is, is a relative term, right? Um, I know what's wrong with my stream. I just figured it out. Why the window is being such a pain. Let me check now again. Maybe uh, this, this explains the anomaly with the, with the board. Yeah, I understand what went wrong with the board now. Let me fix it again. But I'm being sort of stupid. Um... Yeah, I actually had the window in a different position than I normally would have it, and um, and that caused the second problem. So, we're still not awake yet, basically. Board, get in position here. I like to get me some good sleep on <laughs> on Tuesday mornings. Is my one of my. The way today's Wednesday, right? Anyways, will that stay where it is? Tuesday and Wednesday mornings are my mornings to sleep in. Baleful, let's go. 
We're gonna play another E4, try to find something cool to play. I I'm hoping to play more E4. I was thinking about this. Move 11 called me that I was playing more E4 lately, and I think the thing is that I'm pretty good tactically, and I just don't, you know, I'm not really playing to my own strengths by playing a lot of Knight F3, G3. I feel like this has been a problem for me, and one of the reasons why my rating has dropped in tournaments because I have too many draws, because I'm not playing sharp enough positions. I actually, I'll do better if I play, you know, sharper openings, but I've been too lazy to do that, um, and I think I should make an effort. Let's play the Vienna game, even though I don't know the theory um, very well with, with the Vienna game. Um, it's kind of a fun opening. Play the Vienna Gambit here. Yeah, I play Sicilian, basically my number one choice against E4. You know, I was born in born in the Kasparov era. Um, well, not born in the Kasparov era. He was alive when I was born, but I'm, he was the dominant player in my for my generation, Fisher and Kasparov um, in my lifetime. So natural that I play the Sicilian F4 takes f4 um not a really common variation so black's supposed to play d5 for the most part if e5 queen e7 is that a real variation i wouldn't think so like e5 should be just good for white I mean, it's likely that I've looked at this in an old book I have, but I've never seriously played the Vienna. So even this fundamental like move position, I don't have memorized very well. Um, it's a kind of King's Gambit crossed with the Alakine's defense. Knight g8 is, well, basically black's best move. Probably better than playing queen e7, realistically. Queen e7 is just fooling yourself. You'll still have to play knight g8 the next move. You're just putting your queen on a bad square in the interim. Okay, well I assume that white has got some advantage here. Maybe not. Queen h4 check, king e2. It's kind of like a Steinitz king's, king's gambit. You have your favorite variant against you prepared. Dude, that's kind of frightening. Like, you've never played on my stream, but you have your favorite variant prepared. What does that mean? <laughs> I have my favorite variant against you prepared. Don't even know me, and you have the favorite variant prepared against me, okay? That's kind of frightening, man. Um, the queen in front of the king seems to work never. Well, actually, Bob, it's a very common theme in these King's Gambit e King's Gambit ish kind of stuff. B6. Oh my god, I just blundered into this trap. No, it's actually not bad for me. King D2, bishop takes F1, queen takes F1 should be good for white. But he has queen D2 check, and that's mate. Almost. Oh my god. What the hell is going on? It's not mate, it's a perpetual. Queen f2 check, bishop e2, queen e3 check. It's not even special. What is going on around here? I keep getting confused. You're going to take my pawn on g2 if I go there. You're just winning a pawn? Pawn prevention. Okay, well, it's good that I had this thought out. Knight e2 is um, a real draw by repetition. Best case scenario, right? Knight e2, queen e3, check, king e1. Okay, so you visited the stream before. All right. Now I understand. Um, I'm in a lot of trouble. He played this b6 like it was almost... He's done this before. <laughs> Possible some weird variation that he's played in the past. So bishop e2, um, queen takes g2. Let's say rook g1 there. It actually doesn't look that bad. 
The thing is, he's going back, but it, it's not good because he's going back to f2 again. If bishop e2, queen takes g2, he goes back to f2 if I play rook g1. Or is that some kind of weird rep? Rook g1, queen f2, rook f1. I have no clue what's going on here. I still want to get mated in one, you know? I actually looked at knight e2, bishop b4 check, c3, queen e3 check. Is this theory no bob? I think it's just me, like, making a stupid move. After king e2, b6, probably I should think of a different move other than the dumb, the dumb knight f3. I mean, just, like, anything. What should I do? Queen e3 is a queen trap. Yeah, queen e3 loses the queen. Um, but queen takes g2, you know. I'm basically kind of paralyzed. I guess I could play like queen g1 and trade queens and be down two pawns. Likely I'm going to win one of them back, the f4 pawn. But instead, our opponent played this aggressive move. <clears throat> you think like I could do something here. Well, I can trade queens. That's not a good way to do it, probably. Queen g1. I'm going to lose on time. I'm just going to try to trade queens. And um, go into an ending down a pawn where I hope I can pick off the f4 pawn. Our king is good. His f4 pawn is weak. Don't suggest good moves, guys. Bob's right. Um, he, he's, being, he's being very polite. Not that I don't see already. At this hour of the morning, I usually miss a lot of stuff. Queen g1 feels stable. Well, I like my king centralization and the fact that his f4 pawn is weak. There's a good chance I can maybe regain my negative pawn. I don't have a lot of faith in my position, but it might just be good. D6, anybody? Undeveloping my knight wasn't very attractive. I could have taken with the king, but then he had G5. I'm being materialistic this morning, I don't know. Just all about material. Okay, d6, e6, luckily might hold. I don't want him opening up this line against my king here. <clears throat> Your suggestions are usually dumb. That's not true, Clash Kid. Definitely one of the more dangerous players here. Um... All right, guys, thank you for the support this week, Juice Box Wizard, Mel Blanc, Kash Maui. I just noticed that Kash Maui was watching this game. Thank you guys for helping the stream. Um, H6 now, stopping Knight G5. It's good to know why your opponent's making his moves. I guess C3 looks like a safe move. I'll give him my king a C2 square, a C2 square. The C2 square, kind of pivotal, also guarding this pawn on D4. So in the event of d6 now, e6, g5 is probably good for him. Actually, there, I still have e takes f7. If he's not careful, he's going to get in trouble here. 
I mean, maybe White's just better now with a strong center. No breaks. I mean, F6 is like E6. D6 is E6. He's just like worse now. The space advantage is starting to have its... And that move just radically weakens Black's position. Though yet it still might be okay for him. <clears throat> you gotta do something. Maybe this was a good decision. I could have... Wait a minute. I could have taken that en passant. <laughs> Made D5. I kill myself. D4 feels good. Uh-oh. So he took away my E6. And now he plays D6 to break. Well, we're going to have to take that bishop off. Hmm. Not so easy. I can't get the f5 square. Let's, yeah. I'm going to have to take that bishop. The bad bishop. He's not so bad here now. Imbalanced structure. sure about this move, but I don't like his kingside majority. Probably I just got myself in trouble. G4 was too risky. He could have played H5 there. Pretty easy to see what he's doing now. H4. F5 is coming. F5 is definitely on the way. Fortunately, it's going to be a difficult move to meet. Totally lame response. Rook takes. Keeping the initiative. Sadly, my knight doesn't have a good square. trouble here he beat me the first game now he's gonna beat me again can I sack a pawn with like 95 to try to de distract him from from doing damage can I hold this position with passive defense okay his knight on c6 is doing nothing Thankfully, he played this move, which doesn't seem like his best. I mean, I think he had much stronger than that. I mean, knight e5. Freeing the bad knight, eh? Just gonna leave my knight out there. He's got rook h5, knight h2. Knight g2, excuse me. This is very similar to my game with Bob. Um, all right, did not expect that. Are you threatening me? Better be careful here. Goodness. He's got me two minutes to eight seconds. Last piece in the game. Well, I need all the time I can get here. under a lot of pressure with the time situation.
not sure that black is still objectively really better. He does have the outside pawn, though my bishop should be good at kind of stopping that. The time situation is a problem, however. Doesn't have rook h6. That's important. Knight's hanging. He's losing a pawn. Is there any sort of tactic? No, he has knight f5 here. He's not seeing it. He has knight f5. He has to play knight f5. It's the only move. Knight f5, rook h1. h4, bishop g5 is illegal. He just dropped a piece. It's still not that easy to free myself here. get free. You stack a pawn and then play for a mate or something? Not so good. Oh. Well now we both have passive pawns. Passive pawns. That fails. Baleful in panic mode. Blew out the position here. He got nervous. Lost his concentration. But knight f5 would have left him with, with a like small advantage in the end game where I have no time left. It would have been a little bit tricky if he found it. That was a crazy position. This is why we play this this weird Wednesday stream though. You know, to get fun games and Let's not be too results oriented. Um, it was an interesting game. It was fun, fun opening. But I think here at the end, at least, the truth was, you know, he missed a lot of good moves, but he could have played, let's see, rook takes h2, h5 here, rook f2. This position? Not this position. We had another exchange, right? knight f5 and in this position only black can be a tiny bit better with the outside pawn computer wants me to trade rooks thinks that i have to try to play rook e2 here but i was a little bit concerned though objectively my king's not that far from the other side and and my bishop can help to stop the pass pawn so i'm probably okay um he was clearly better at some point some points even in the opening it looks like bishop b4 ouch Well, not actually so bad. Weird position. Has this ever been played before? There's no games. Check this out. So, I mean, it's unbelievable that there's only one game in the chess opening database here. If you think about, like, people play, Magnus Carlsen plays e4, knight f6, e5, knight g8. What's the evaluation? What's the difference here, objectively, between this and out defense with knight g8? 0.6 advantage to white in almost the same kind of situation, right? If you compare this to a regular knight g8 Aliakin's defense, e5 knight here, e5, knight g8 is like 0 0.8, 0 0.6. And, and there's like 100 games here almost. It's like the same evaluation. Um, yeah. But yet there's only one game in this position. Let's see, e5 knight g8. So the engine wants to play knight f3, stopping queen h4 check. 
Sorensen. Knight f3, d6. For example, look how little advantage I have here. Check this out. It's dropping down to point three now. Like making this look like a totally viable variation for black. Look, we've discovered this is actually not so bad for black at all. Knight f3, and he can break with d6. Excuse me. Hey, if knight f3, d6. It doesn't seem that bad for black at all. This one game that exists here, black played d5, but that doesn't really make sense. I mean, okay, d5 is probably not so bad, but I mean, you want to destroy the enemy center, you know? Why doesn't this guy def destroy the center with d6? Anyway, interesting discovery there. Not such a bad position for black in reality. Um, does it check the move orders? Um, I think it recognizes transpositions for the most part, the opening explorer. What do we got for subscriber challenges? The S villain is trying to sneak in the rated challenge. S villain, you're third on the list if you want to re challenge me. Um, we're only playing casual, 5 plus 3 through 7 plus 3. Uh, Scoble, you would think it would recognize the transpositions, I'm pretty sure. D6 was much better than H6 for him. I mean, H6 was a bad move, man. I mean, there's no question. That's far later in the game. Well, d6 has a problem too, though. You've got to recognize that e6, this is an issue for black. Maybe it's better than h6, but I still don't think he should allow that. Computer doesn't really buy into it, though, surprisingly. White's better here. I mean, what does it want to play? Okay, you can't trust what my engine says, because my CPU is, like, all maxed out, and for some reason, I probably just need to clean this computer up. But it's not really good to play d6 either. So he has kind of a problem here. It looks like there's a subtle move, maybe f6. I don't know, you know. I think that white could possibly stand better in this position. Interesting game overall. So I'm not, I'm not very tough this morning. I mean, tough maybe, but not playing well. Hang on. I'm good at defense. My, my, one of my best chess friends characterized my play as... Um, you know, if you could define chess players in like one sentence, he defined me by saying that I'm hard to kill. This is it's my greatest strength. Um, which means that I'm used to getting bad positions and saving myself. E4. Um, you beat me in the first time you played me, Baleful. So Scoble now playing D5. What can we play? against the Scandinavian. Running out of ideas for new ideas. This is a fairly fast time control. Five arch enemy. There was an old master from, from Boston named Harry Lyman. He was like the benefactor of the chess club in Boston. And he actually used to play this I don't know what it's called. It has a name, I guess. It's just just a really old school gambit. Harry loved to do this kind of stuff. He was the father of the guy who did the TV show about, there was like a, a Fisher television special or something when Bobby was, there was a television chess announcer named Shelby Lyman. And he was the, the son of the guy. Um, Let's try bishop b5, playing it like a nimzo. Uh-oh. Scoble has this all prepared. He literally, like, knows this. It's kind of frightening. I don't... I didn't know this. All right, we're in trouble now. But I've got a pawn to the good, so I can always give up a pawn if I have to. Feels like bishop f1 is probably the best move for white here. But objectively, I don't want to play that. What are we going to do? I'm going to be double attacked on C2 and, and G2. So we've walked into a trap, basically. Well, I should play Knight C3 and get back a pawn. I think this has got to be my, my best option. We've got to do this and get back the pawn. 
Bishop h3, queen takes h3. So he has to trade queens. Scoble loves it. Oh, he doesn't have to trade queens. He can play this, okay. Those end games, I was going to say. I don't know, I'm just kidding. I don't know if he loves end games or not. I don't know him that well yet. Feels like I should probably be castling queenside with my kingside pawn structure the way it's distributed at the moment. Yeah, Pichu called it. Queen f3, bishop h3. It's not one of those positions that actually, that doesn't work. So Bob says it's the Blackburn Gambit. Makes sense. It looks like something from the from the 19th century. Objectively unsound for black, but I missed it. I messed up with bishop b5, apparently. Not a good move at all. <clears throat> okay, we don't have a lot of maneuvering room here. I guess you could play d4 and really go for it. I'm thinking d4 opening the position seems kind of counterintuitive. d3, I don't know, it might be too slow. Obviously I have rook g1. Maybe that's just my best move. We gotta take Tempe when we can get them. Probably I shouldn't pass this opportunity to play rook g1. Now he's offering a trade of queens. He was opposed to this before. He's like a politician. Changing his stance on things every two minutes. He suddenly decided he wants to trade queens. All right. One would assume the position is approximately equal. But I like his bishops a lot here. They look they look pretty wicked. I managed to be slightly uncomfortable in the opening stage again, but that's the theme of the, of the day. I'm not playing stuff I'm comfortable with. Falkbeer, appropriate name for today, huh? Yasser has been called. How does Yasser fit in here? Knight g4, that, that feels like a violation of fundamental principles. If I've ever seen one. He wants to play f5? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. He wants to play knight h2 and try to trap my guy there? You want to get your knight trapped? If you want to get your knight trap, I can arrange for that. No, h3 isn't a very good move. He's just going to go back, then I have to worry about the h3 pawn. Well, it's certainly provocative. <clears throat> Gotta give him that. What the heck, dude? What a strange move to play. Plus he'll have bishop c5 at some point. I gotta play something. Okay, bishop c5 is not a problem, but h3 would weaken my pawn. <laughs> like h3, knight h2, rook g3 is good for white, but h3, knight f6, and now I have to babysit my h pawn again. I figure maybe it's safer just not to move it at all. 95 was talked about, but I don't think 95, yeah, I don't know what it does, really. This was the secondary plan for black, although. Yeah, he takes away 94 now. There's an annoying dog barking. You guys can hear that. feels slightly passive for me. I'm just going to try to play this position strategically. I, I don't know. Bishop g5 is not good. Positional Scandinavian. I should play f4 if I could. It weakens a lot of the white squares with my bishop out here. 
I'm, I'm only equal, it feels like, at best. Budapest have lots of feral dogs. That's Romania. Alright. What are we going to do? I don't really have a plan. That's the problem. Romania, notably a lot of dogs. Random dogs just walking around and stuff. Could I have one upon there? Okay, I'm just gonna make moves. I gotta stop trying to play the best moves and all that stuff, basically. He's just trying to flag me, I just realized. It's very deep. Probably all the, you know. Don't give me more time, Scoble. It's cool. We gotta keep the games to a limit, limited amount of time. Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. The tourists are, are like feral dogs. The drunk one singing football chants in the night. In my old apartment, where I used to live on a main street, that was a huge problem at night. I couldn't sleep because of English football fans chanting songs. I was like, dude, go back to your country and, and, and sing the songs there. No one even understood what they were saying for the most part. Bishop takes f4, check. English football fans, I mean, are singing these songs all the time. The Hungarian football f fans do that, but they don't walk around like the city doing it. You know, they do it at football matches. Um, all right, what are we doing? This is a really good game by Black, by the way. Man, I have no clue. My rooks are very strangely placed here on G2 and, and G1. The American tourists aren't so bad. They're just, you know, they don't sing songs and stuff. They don't get as drunk as their English counterparts. All right, let's see. I don't mean to single out anybody. <laughs> it just was a problem. It was kind of a problem where I lived. Oh man, I'm gonna lose on time. Damn, dude. This is a bad move. Scoble, stop giving one more time, dude. Seriously. I don't need more time. We have a three second increment. And it just makes the game last forever. It's been a really, really great game by Black. But they sink a lot of money in the economy, so like all tourist-based economies, um, you have to just kind of accept it. They're really not that, that bad in the grand scheme of things. But I don't really understand the point of going to random places and chanting football, football songs. They need to get a life. Do something like appropriate to where you are. Do you have a tactic here, Rook takes E2? I was just about to say. Oh no. Tactic alert. Rook takes d2. Now rook takes d2, rook takes d2, bishop takes c6, rook e2. What's the status of that? Look at this. He missed rook takes d2, doing this instead, when it's equal material. What is he taking? My h2? 
But Rook H, I mean, Knight H2, I can deal with that. Fortunately. So we're still okay. After everything's said and done. The very unbalanced pawn structure, imbalanced pawn structure, um, could lend itself could lend itself to a sharp endgame. What's going on here? Maybe he forgot that I have D D1 knight covering B2. He thought he had a tactic. He thinks he has a tactic with like bishop takes B2 check here. Only to be like confounded by knight takes B2. Tragically losing. This seems to be the story of the day. Yeah. Forgot to have this. <laughs> this is another ridiculous game. Every game I'm like clearly worse and then somehow win. Fisher chanting. All right. We do chess chants in random cities. Fisher. Um. All right, knight takes b2. Yeah, we're chess players, and I'm criticizing people of that they should get a life. It's pretty sad, actually. Um, I remember playing in like the European Poker Tour and, and being at some tournament, or maybe a cash game, where this young guy started ranting about how chess was like stupid, because I mentioned that I played chess. It's like, you play chess, huh? I'm like, here you're sitting around playing cards around the table, and you think you're really cool? That's like a really I mean that's an awesome way to spend your life and you're making fun of chess actually most poker players really respect chess this guy was an exception clash kids 7 plus 3 um, I'll take that challenge next as Phil corrected his challenge okay guys I don't know I'm getting um, I'm getting really crappy positions playing this weird stuff that I've been playing <laughs> I have a, a small margin for error in the opening, it looks like. Flash kid plays e4. Um, all right. Pro soccer, a lot of games are rigged. Probably not the only sport where that's the case. e4. What are we going to do? We never play the French defense. Let's try some kind of French defense just for fun. I mean, I don't have to play like bizarre extreme openings. I just want to play stuff that I don't normally play. French defenses I almost never play. Then he plays d3, okay. Ponda, what do we play against the French defense that's unusual? What do we play against the King's Indian attack with French defense structure that's unusual? We'll ask the Ponda. I know what his suggestion is going to be though. Hey guys, um, please don't chant football songs when we're trying to sleep, okay? It really pisses us off. But anyways, um, H5 Panda is a suggestion. No, that's not a setup, alright? You just transposed the Sicilian, but that's not very interesting. B5! The Polish is always appropriate. Egregious. Egreg. Egregious. Is that right? Egregious. Egregious? I've never said that word in my life. I thought it was like egregious. Egregious. The pawn does here. Now, d3 is the standard king's Indian attack. And we're meeting it with the Polish Polish defense with b5. Just to be weird. Because b5 is better than b6. It gives us a little more space on the queen side. Actually, there'll probably be a ton of games in the opening explorer from this position. It turns out that the King's Indian type of attack is pretty common going to, to run into this Polish type of setup. You're thinking what? D5, D takes E4, Knight C6? What? D5, D takes E4? Knight C6 and E5, what's that? 
Now a really strange move from Clash Kid B3. Queen F6. Trying to lose a piece. Queen F6, C3. Ain't so bad for white. Um, so I'm kidding about that. But this looks pretty good. D5 right away. Let's wait on that. Talk to your pieces, folks, like Jonathan Rousen recommends. Hello, Knight. How do you feel? Would you like to go to F6 or E7? You like F6 better. It feels a little roomier. Okay. How about you on the queen side? You don't want to get in what you feel like you don't want to get in the way of your friend on b7? All right, I understand. So you prefer to go to d7, maybe. I'm not sure objectively, guys. If this is what Jonathan Rawson meant when he talked about... Was it Chess for Zebras? Or one of these... Was it his other book? He was talking about talking to your pieces. If he meant literally or not. Um, but b3... It's not weird enough yet. I agree. F5 is uh, not appropriate. Could play D5. Camel culture, what's up? I know he's camel culture, clutcher, clutcher, but clutcher is hard to say. Makes me double clutch my pronunciation. Camel culture. We haven't seen the other camel this week. He's been MIA. Play the super lame move after extended thought. It's good to spend like a minute and a half on bishop e7. Utterly standard move. Did I reject d5 because of ed knight f6 c4? I was seriously thinking that. The seven deadly chess sins. Thanks, JCS. So that was Jonathan Ross's second book. First was the chess for zebras, which was extremely well received. Um, this was the seven deadly chess sins. It's good with the titles. I'm coming out with chess for pandas. <laughs> chess for pandas. Okay. But at least we always respect J. Row for his. Um, for his philosophical approach to the game. Oh, man. Um, don't know if, if Rawson's even playing these days. If he's doing something else. J. Row. <clears throat> what would... What's that guy's name? What would Tamash Gelashvili do here? Beat me with the. He beat me with the, the Polish defense. And we've got to do something. Let's just do it. Play on intuition a little bit more. We don't talk to the low. What? Talk to lowly talks? Only to pieces. Lowly pawns. You're catching a dyslexia from me. This position has probably been reached several times. Actually, Clash Kid's approach with B3 is very strange. That's not typical. The fear would be that black could take control of the dark squares, you know, the diagonal. So the Gellish really plan of like moving the knight and playing bishop f6 to kind of usurp control of that dark squares, which he did against me in a slightly different type of position. Um, all right, but I mean, this is more or less like a very standard looking KIA. We got maximum spacage on the queen side. That's basically how you play these against the Kings Indian things. The art of chess master consciousness and the way of the, the chess ponda. That's awesome. Slaggy's Hungary viewers can be interpreted in that's always the worst. The people that try to do the play on words with the, I'm I'm hungry. It's a depth of, of humor that's never been encountered before. Grabbing the space. 
grabbing the space, compromising his queen side. For those of you that don't know, I I am a dual resident of the United States and Hungary. I spend most of my time here in Budapest. I will be going back to the USA again in October. So we'll be messing up the stream times a lot, mixing up the stream times, not messing up, but mixing up. Be going back to USA time in mid-October and then switching it up again at the end of the year or in, in, in December. So keep an eye on the schedule for my stream times. We'll try to keep it consistent when I'm in one place, but there may be switches in location so Bob, yeah, I mean, I highly recommend those books by Rousson. I don't do a lot of book recommendations here, but um, but I should more often. But Jonathan is a very thoughtful guy. You know, most chess players are kind of like only into chess, but he has a kind of wider education and uh, met him when he was studying at Harvard. when I lived in Boston. It's nice to see like strong chess players who can and then like to see like more outside of chess, you know, more of the world than just chess. It's amazing actually how good you can get and be really kind of worldly at the same time. All right, finally he closes the, cent the centrum as they say here in Hungary. The queen side has been compromised the Isolani on A3. I also have the C4 possibly could be a strong break for me. But I know if I'm white, I'm very worried about my structure on the queen side here. Just looks totally messed up. The only thing I don't like about Hungary are the, the constant ambulances in the capital city here in, in Budapest. Very noise sensitive. I've already complained about English football songs. The second worst thing are the ambulances. In the West, we don't have sound. For some reason, I don't know why, sounds seem to travel more here. I never really noticed like being annoyed for things like ambulances in Boston. Checking out your YouTube videos on the Polish defense, early B5. My YouTube videos on the Polish defense? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? C4. What if we just create a pass passive pawn? C4 is a good try. Spirited move. He's trying to take me down on d5. Actually, that was one of the drawbacks of knight c6. It actually blocks my bishop. I asked the knight before earlier in the game, and he said he didn't want to block his friend on b7, but then we went and put him there anyway, right after he told me that he didn't want to do that. So I guess I should take on, on c4 and play d4 and stuff him. This makes sense, but it's going to give him some squares and some play. If I play d4... He gets to do like a Nimzovichian sort of blockade. Now I'm, I'm sort of already second guessing myself. Oh no, man. Really well played by White. But at the end of the day, this will kill his bishop on b2. I gotta keep remembering that this is not a normal King's Indian attack. His bishop is not on c1, it's not poised to like go to h6. We're killing it with d4. And we've got pressure with this rook on c4, so he has problems here, you know, and crazy stuff like here, here, isn't going to be as effective as like, it's not like his bishop has an open diagonal. So, actually like knight e4 might just allow him to take on e5. There's a dedicated ambulance museum in Budapest, the Mento Museum. Not surprising. I mean, I applaud what they do. But I don't know why the sirens are so loud. And I swear I have a, a conspiracy theory about Budapest ambulances. There's just too many of them. So I think that the secret must be they do like secret ambulance training or something. Like basically a lot of the ambulances that we hear, there simply can't be that many like ill people. They have to be like dry runs or something. You know, I mean, 
it's got to be like difficult being an ambulance driver in Hungary. Don't even like you don't even want to hear my German friends like talk about Hungarian drivers, but uh, but it's possible. Let's see. Knight takes e5. It's possible the ambulances are doing like trial practice or something. Knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Bishop takes g2. Knight takes d7. I just, I just love like making up all kinds of weird conspiracy theories and stuff. Is my is my rook just gonna get trapped out there? Seems like a strange thing to do, doesn't it? To play knight a5. Oh my god, what am I doing? The, the knight told me that he didn't want to block his friend on b7. My rook is like, ow, oh, I feel uncomfortable. This hurts. I don't like it here. I feel kind of cramped. Like I can't move and my knees are stuffed into the dashboard. Can you pull back your seat a little bit? That's like when you're in the car, you know, and your friend is like seven feet tall. That's what the rook is feeling right now. You're like, you're in the back seat. Your friend is seven feet tall. Is like sitting in the front seat. And your knees have no room. Clash Kid playing a great Steinitzian blockade right about now. How serious is this situation? It's pretty serious. He's got the good blockade going on. Even with his crappy bishop on g2 or b2, um, the rest of his position makes sense. Alright. Knight f3, I feel like, blocks some of his pieces, at least. Still a very unimpressive game by me. Yeah, it's really weird about Asturbate. I was asking yesterday, where is he? And I still don't have an answer. Does anyone know? Soltigo's not here. He's probably resting from some late night stream or something. Feels like White has won the battle of, um, of the E5 square. Bob, don't even start. You're not funny, Bob. Try to lock it up. All right. I can defend those pawns pretty well with my knights. Unfortunately, I didn't want to drop the other one on c5, so I can hold that too. Ooh, that was lucky I put the rook on a6. I thought, okay, maybe it'll do something here. I was like almost gonna put it on a7, and then, all right. Another game, Soltigo doesn't stream late, late at night anymore. Yeah, but he's like the only person who probably would know, other than me, maybe, what's up with Asturbate. But I haven't seen Asturbate miss two streams since I can remember in the last six months. Um, he's usually like the first person here, so it's, it's kind of concerning. All right, that's it for our subscribers. We're gonna take on Tennis Pa. Tennis ball from Estonia, cool. We, we haven't recently had tennis from Estonia. All right. Um, 
Jan Elvest. Elvest Jr. I do play the Sicilian. He was he was asking if I played the Sicilian earlier. Isn't that what you did? All right, e4, c5, knight c3, but we've got to play something different. Um, against this, I'll play a6, because, I mean, the, usually I play g6, bishop g7, knight c6, all the standard stuff. Um, I don't know this variation that well. Here we go with the Polish again. Effectively the Polish, though this is admittedly like supposed to be a kind of legitimate system. Richard Alistair recommended this like 10 years ago in his book, Beating the Anti-Sicilians. Or I think it's a different title. Something about anti-Sicilians. Generally speaking, though, you're not supposed to play f4, or at least it's not as good um, as as like standard Grand Prix attacks. Yeah, Soltico had to check and he had to check the schedule and 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 go to a new a new time zone, I guess, because he was killing himself staying up all night, which is something you probably don't want to do for a long period of time. So I understand that. Guys, thank you for supporting the stream. Thanks for being here subscribing. Um, tomorrow we have our subscriber stream. So on Thursday nights, what I do is is ask people to submit games who are subscribers to the stream. Obviously submit games via message on Lee Chess or however. And, um, and we go over those games for 10 or 15 minutes per game on Thursday nights. If you'd like to join us, we'll be here tomorrow night, my subscriber stream at 6.30 p.m. CEST, Central European Summertime. Summertime is almost over, I guess. D3. So I'm on my own. I don't remember exactly what we're supposed to do. Not all that different from last game, actually. Astrobeat is in Las Vegas. So it's, um,. Yeah, I mean, you could hardly blame him, but he was here all the time, so there's inconsistency. Are you going to pick up another mod since Soltigo isn't here much lately? It's probably not a bad idea. We should, we should probably find someone else to become a mod. The Vegas area. I think he works at the Bunny Ranch. No, I just saw... I don't want to get Bob started, but I was just reading a BBC article about legal prostitution in, in Nevada. Trying to shut it down in one one county or something. All right, knight f3, d5. I'm just kidding. I have no idea, you know, exactly what Astrobate does or where he lives precisely. No, he lives in Las Vegas, in the, in the Las Vegas area. But anyway, we miss him. He's our uh, biggest supporter. E5. Now, I had a game the other day against Mule Skinner from virtually the same position, or at least last week. I played knight g8. Yeah, remember, guys? I was supposed to play knight d7. Seriously? I don't know, but I remember analyzing the game with the stockfish, and, and it was like freaking out when I went knight g8. So I'm going to put the knight here, but I don't like this a whole lot better, to be honest with you. Um, this position gives me the creeps. We don't have much space. Once again, very, very similar to last game. I got to say I like white here. I must be doing something seriously wrong. I've got the book right here. Um, beating unusual chess openings? No. I have piles and piles of books on my table. My desk here. So Tennis Pal played h3. He wants to play g4, obviously. d5 wasn't the best move. Okay, so that's our opponent speaking, right? I'm supposed to play like b4, I guess, in some moment. That was actually my opponent. 
he's Mighty Marcus, right? Mule Skinner played an ingenious pawn sacrifice against me. I guess it was a simul game. But Mighty Marcus, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Mule Skinner is a guy who's been very faithful to playing in my stream. And he's a regular Grand Prix Attack player. We've probably played an enormous amount of games in the Grand Prix Attack, like mostly in the main variations. Um, literally, I've played like 50 games with him on stream, I think. Soltigo is here. We were just talking about you. You miss one hour and they want to replace you. Next thing you know, they're like, replace Soltigo. He's not faithful to the stream. No, they didn't say it. I'm just kidding, man. So h5, g4, no fear from our opponent here. All right, whatever. I was seriously thinking about playing, yeah, you play this variant. It's the kind of variant you need to play a lot to really get the hang of it, I would imagine. Um, actually, but that's true for all openings, I suppose. He's only 1838. shouldn't be afraid but I can only do so much as my position will allow I was actually talking with the knight coming back here we have the same problem as last game where these guys are having a problem communicating because the knight on c6 isn't happy with the bishop on b7 and the bishop on b7 isn't happy with the knight on c6 you're like oh that hurts <laughs> talk to your pieces guys Make sure they communicate and they talk to each other as well. It's pretty aggressive the way that he played here. I mean, opening up the H file against himself could be very, a very good way of like getting crushed. But if you do it in a controlled manner and you make sure that I have no concrete way of penetrating on the on the H file, it's probably not bad. I mean, he understands like his his grand plan should be to play F five in the structure. It's like a French. But it's hard to do that, you know, when your king could come under fire on the G and H files. So, Soltigo, actually, the reason I brought you up um, wasn't because of your absence necessarily, but I thought maybe you heard, you know, what was going on. I asked last night and I didn't catch it because I was busy or why, I don't know. I guess I was just concentrating on the tournament. But I was wondering if you if you heard from Acerbate, like, what's he doing? Because... We never missed him for two streams before. That's weird. Okay, I basically have no clue what to do here. I'll try to reorganize myself, Nidorf style. C3. Not the C4 of Clash Kid. Different approach. Where's the knight going? My original plan was to play queen a7 and bishop and bishop b6, but I decided to first of all get the bishop off the back rank to allow castling, and then maybe like a good, more gradual queen a7, bishop b6. You haven't seen him, okay. It's weird. He's like always here. And Bob starts to make bad jokes, you know, when people like don't show up for a couple days. If I keep taking my time, maybe he will play C4. <laughs> Just shut it down, you know, shut down this diagonal. I'm not calculating very much. We're not awake enough for that yet. I would need another coffee. If anybody wants to... What was it you guys were talking about? Um, maybe you guys weren't the ones, but yesterday there's someone who was talking about streamers who, who take food donations and then get like get it delivered. What I need is coffee delivery. We could sack a piece for the amoeba from hell. No, he just took quickly, uh-oh. But that's, that's weird. Now which way do we take? Speaking of amoeba from hell, well, I think I don't want to let him have a knight on e4. I mean, it would be nice to open my bishop and all that jazz, but and he takes e5 even here.
Let's castle first. No half measures. The G file looks deadly. I think we timed this. I have knight takes e5 all the time. Even bishop takes e5, come to think of it. Might even be good. The location of his king is not really safe. Food donations are a real thing. I think he's falling apart. Beer donations. A little short of time. I think I missed queen h4 there, but it's still strong. Yeah, tennis pal definitely messed this up. He's facing maiden loss of queen. But he had me under pressure the whole time. I thought white was slightly better the whole the whole game but again like on the other hand it is a tricky situation to play with your king you know likely to get opened up at any minute um that's not not easy to do man come on Too many pawns down the middle. So I messed up the opening again. That's the theme of the day today. It shouldn't be like weird Wednesday. It should be like bad openings Wednesday. Just how to play everything wrong. Playing things I don't know and, and getting bad positions. How to defend bad positions on Wednesday. All right, what did I do wrong here? Seriously. So you played F4. Basically, what I read from Palliser, who I think is a very thoughtful author, is that like generally you just don't do f4 in these lines. And it, it is a rare move, and white seems to have a bad score after f4. But I still there's still a Hare Krishna played it, and Gawain Jones. I mean, Gawain, is, this is back in 2007. But he's a pretty hardcore Grand Prix attack guy, following his, his forefathers from the UK. Um, e6 d3 so it turns out d5 is the main move even relatively recent doodah game d5 is the main move I have no clue you know what the best move is knight f6 you said that d5 was wrong but it is the most common move in this position b4 has a better score though notably like but also I mean, white does have a good score after d5. I don't know. Maybe maybe b4 is truly a better move. The stockfish doesn't really care about b4. But there's an interesting note. Now, again, don't trust my engine because my CPU is very, very bogged down. So, knight e2 played. And then, and then d5. So first you kick the knight away, then you play d5. And this is basically, I think, what Mighty Marcus was saying. You know, e5. There's a Frasian A game here. And then knight fd7 rather than knight g8. And the g8 just doesn't keep enough pressure on the white center, I guess. I mean, I'm terrified of f5 tumbling forward in. That's pretty much a theme in all closed Sicilians, the f5 break. Anyway, guys, what do we got now? Um... No other subscribers. I'm taking the, the challenges in order um, from the non-subscribers. So Pichu's up next. He's been tough lately. Do I have the weird sun coming in the room again? Not too bad yet. Got a glare on my screen. If it gets out of control, let me know. Might have to take extreme measures. So I was thinking alcohol and, and coffee donations. B4. 
Normally I play d5, bishop g4 here. But let's try something else. The Pop Geller defense. Pop Geller <laughs> beating Yuri Lapshin with b2 e4. It's a funny move, you know, it, it, it seems strange, but it it may not be that bad. Acerbate, I've been helping him, Bob. Not really like formal, formal lessons, but you know, definitely trying to help him. A3, and I think he's improved. You know, he's basically self-taught. He didn't have any, um, he didn't have any real, real uh, good guidance for learning the game. So I've been able to point him in the right direction. Um, A3. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Now, I don't remember the, the popular Lapshin game. Lapshin with white losing to my friend. But I guess Geller just developed his pieces and then won the game eventually. E4 just taking white out of book. Bob would definitely send beer. That's awesome. Directly from the Czech Republic. Czechia. Sorry. Czechia sounds weird, you know? It just sounds weird. Czechia. It sounds like a good place for chess, though. The Czechians. So are the Czech people now Czechians? Or are they still Czechs? Do we have any Czech people here to, to verify? Today is the, it's the it's the Polish the theme. Pichu continuing it with bishop bishop b two with the white pieces, totally makes sense. It's like a reverse of my game. My other game, actually, they're all the same today. Very funny. I don't think that Lapshin played like this. He must have done something different. Yuri Lapshin is like a really strong rapid player from the United States. He, he's kind of good rapid blitz. And he plays the, the Polish all the time, managing to beat me with it. He published a book on the Polish and then published his win against me among the victims there. Though he didn't lose, I mean, he didn't even win the game anything because of the opening. It was just like later in the middle game that I lost from a decent position. Doesn't seem particularly relevant. The opening theory. All right, um, I gotta make sure that my e4 pawn remains, remains. King's Indian attack reversed. That's what this is. Guys, please support the stream. Now he's got the same problem I was talking about. Those pieces always like getting in each other's way. Very unique position here. I want to support my e4 strong point. This is my strong point. Petrosian. Petrosian. I've been criticized for my Armenian pronunciations, and rightfully so. Lazy American. I say things like Petrosian. Petrosian. Petrosian or Aronian. Aronian Petrosian. Kasparov. We should have like the top 10 worst pronunciations of chess players' names. Do it like a David Letterman. Top 10. Um, F3, a violent attempt to usurp control of the E4 square. Alakine, Aronian, Kasparov, Petrosian. What are the other like worst pronounced chess names? Uwe, the, the the Dutch world champion Uwe, would definitely got it. You got to put that in the top ten. Almost everyone mispronounces that. Uvi, like Uvi Reyes. Now he has g4. 
damn it. G4 is so strong for white here. C6 is debatable, but I want to keep him off of D5. This I can see being a very big problem in some lines in the future. Carjacking. Carjacker and, and Grish, Grishchuk. Viz Vanavin. Is there any relation between Vishmanavan and, and Viswanathan? Strange conspiracy theories. G4, Knight takes G4. You told him about that. But you never would have seen it. F3 is obviously a risky move. So let's say he takes, and I take with the knight, and he takes with the knight, and I take with the bishop. So then he takes control of the center, like D3. Bishop has to go back to G6. He's increased his central superiority, his central predominance of pawns. That Uwe would have. Max Uwe. Uwe. Pasha. I've got challenges, um, five to be exact. The S villain, Nikola Chess, also from Hungary. And then a game, a game, a game, and a name I can't pronounce. Sikiki Yamajanadu, which um, sounds vaguely Japanese. Arsenal is best, and we've got a subscriber, I believe, in Chestosterone. So if, if Chestosterone is still a sub, which I assume he is, um, we would take that challenge next. Honoring my subscribers on Mondays and Wednesdays with, with the. Uh, preferential treatment here okay so is there any is there anything to bishop takes e4 I don't really see you know bishop takes e4 having any particular benefits bishop takes e4 giving up a vital white score to bishop I just don't think I'm going to do that not today my bishop is not going to be like super happy, um, you know, on g6 probably in the grand scheme of things, but we have a little trouble getting out our pieces here. Bishop takes is white square hell. We do have this weird Cunningham variation of the King's Gambit sort of check on h4, like bishop e7, bishop takes, bishop h4 check. I guess it doesn't do anything though, he just plays g3. It's like a Fromm's Gambit. So at the end of the day, we have a serious problem with the long diagonal. If you played d3, I should more seriously consider capturing on f3 now. He, he somehow makes it a tiny bit more appealing. Um, Bishop f5 looks like a tempo loss. Wait, central control is just too good. House and queen side looks dangerous for me. Running out of time and money. How am I going to get out of this danger on a long diagonal? We'll have to play knight f6 and then bishop e7 and crawl my way out. White has a really dominant position here. Center just extremely strong. But you can see that Pichu has a very good score of late against me. Really well played game. At least I managed to castle. From this position of dubiousness.
Flopier is arguing that A3 may have been unnecessary. unnecessary. Um, of course, it's not a bad move to, to play, but yeah, maybe he didn't have to play that quite so early. Right at the moment, like I might be able to win a pawn on B4 with check if it wasn't protected. So it's like the kind of thing you eventually have to do, but he may have played it unnecessarily. But still, he has, I think, a big advantage here. You know, on the other hand, maybe you could argue that he's overextended. Knight g4, queen d2, bishop f6. I just want to trade pieces. But I'm getting really bad glare on my computer. We have the the heavenly rays from God? Not yet. They're hitting my, my computer instead of the webcam. Usually they're right on the webcam, but right now they're lower than that. They're on the third and fourth ranks of my monitor. So I can't see what's on the third and fourth ranks. We're basically flying blind here. Now I miscalculated something. But on d4, I have rook e8, it turns out. d4, bishop takes e4. Okay, he just exchanged. Queen takes... Knight g5. It's like a trap, right? I have knight f2 check, but it doesn't do anything. Oh my gosh. Do your worst. So I have knight f2 check. He says to protect everything all the time. That's what I did say. Make sure everything's protected. Help improve the stream. Thank you, Mubot. Good to see you, Soltigo. I didn't have a chance to really like greet you properly. What was the viability of Bishop A4 or Bishop G5? Um, man, he's gonna allow this? I must have missed something. The inherent weakness on the dark squares makes this possible. He's not listening to the stream. Must have had it turned off. Doesn't knight g5 kills you immediately? Well, that's what I thought till I saw this. Klimt killer. Yeah, we're bronies. There's nothing wrong with being a brony. I'm not ashamed. Don't be a brony hater. Knight f3, they're smothered mates. Smothered mater. I'm a brony. A brony lover and smothered mater. Saltiga, what's up? No way. There's no smothered mates. Because he has knight g1. So what is it, a rep draw? Is my knight freaking trapped? Knight takes e4 check, knight takes d4, knight takes d2, rook d1, c5, when I gets out, gets out, c5, take, take, knight b5, knight b3. I mean, is it worth it going for the win here? Ultimately, is there a win? Let's just repeat move to gain time on the clock. Oh my god, my queen is trapped there. So I have to do this. All right. It's not perpetual check, though. 
See, that's the thing. Freedom. Freedom for the night. Freedom for the night. Was he trapping my queen with like rook takes f2? Queen takes f2, rook f1, no? So this was like forced. Man, we're up two pawns in an ending. That can't be bad. The problem is knight h3 check, king h1, and then knight f2, rook takes f2. Queen takes f2, rook f1 trapping my queen. The problem is I'm also like blinded by the light right now. It's against the 4th and 5th ranks at this point. Now it's moved down to the more relevant part of the board. I've got a very, very bad glare on the screen. <laughs> the most common, excuse me, the most random comment, the most common randment. Bob bought a huge salmon filet. News flash. Good move. I'm just completely blind. I can't see the third and fourth ranks here. That was a really stupid move by me. Should have get I should have got this thing moving earlier. It's an amazingly tricky player. that move? What? Okay. What is he in like bullet? I mean, is he like 2600 in bullet? Damn, dude.
It seems like kind of a waste of time to play this out, though. <clears throat> He's an insanely competitive player. I just can't see, like, three ranks of the board right now, so it makes... I'm in a little bit of a handicap situation. Um... I basically can't see how much time I have. To draw. His technique is kind of surreal. I can't see the bottom three ranks of the board at all, or the clock. So that was a little bit of a, a little bit of a handicap. I can't even see how much time I have. Something like seven seconds, eight seconds. Yeah, of course you should resign, dude. I mean, we waste a lot of time there. But um but you got the you got the draw. I probably could have played like two other games in the time that we we played the 100 moves there. I made the board a little too big. Hold on a second there. All right. Um something has to be done. I literally couldn't see the bottom the the 5th and 6th ranks of the screen. I don't know too many people who can play end games like that. It's more like 2300 FIDE than 2000. Knight f3, g6. I want to try to play something different here. Of course I was winning. I mean, it's not a question. I'm up two pawns and a queen ending. It's 100% winning. Just that, you know, he plays instant moves perfectly. It's pretty hard to, to play when I can't see the board. Um, it's also hard to think of something different against the modern defense. Um, the B4 theme again today doesn't seem overly appropriate here. Let's try something weird with d4. I'm not going to play e4. Speaking of b4, we've used that too much today. Um, but the monitor is so generic, you know, it's it's very hard to come up with, with anything new here. What would I call an unusual line, you know? Testosterone just plays this every single game. Um, I've used probably every setup I have against the modern. But to play something unusual, I don't know what to say. Let's just play g3, see what he does. Maybe we can find a, a strange move. 
Um, you don't feel like the wacky openings. I didn't call it wacky. I called them weird. You know, weird for me. But that's not the theme. It's not wacky. It's not supposed to be wacky. Just unusual would probably be a better a better term. Um, I don't want to play like garbage openings and totally stupid stuff. This is actually a pretty incisive move by Black. I had a game where I played c3, and I think my opponent played queen b6 in, in Zalkarish two years ago. Little kid from India. He's probably like 2,500 now. Um, I was just felt ill. Like, right after queen b6, basically, black is already slightly better. Uh, I guess d5 is, is really necessary here. If white wants to play for something. Wacky Wednesday. No, I think that's Dr. Seuss or something. You've been reading too many Dr. Seuss books, Bob. I know what you do before you go to bed. You take out all your old Dr. Seuss bedtime stories and go over them again. All right. S. Villain. Sikiki. Trying to pronounce Japanese names is not, not on the menu for today. We've got maybe the the time for two more games. I really need to do some yoga, Bob. Got a very stiff neck. We could do some yoga while being a brony. D5, D6, bishop G2. I guess C4 just transposes to a normal Fianchetto. The Fianchetto Benoni slash Kings Indian. Haven't done any yoga in a while, but I think I need it, man. It's a good place to, to go. Sixty percent CPU. I have no idea what my computer is doing with this OBS, man. Now I can go into a Banco with B5 if he wants. Probably it's more accurate to play Knight C3 there. Chestnut turn transposes to the Banco. I, I mean to the modern Benoni. I didn't know. Um, you know, you would assume the guy plays the modern defense. Like, what are the chances? Well, then again, you got to know something if you play the modern defense. I guess he's a Benoni player. But does he play Benoni straight up against D4? Masculine yoga. Yoga is tough, man. I, I've done yoga. Not a lot, not for an extended period of time, but I did dabble in it. Hot yoga. You want to sweat a lot? My face... <laughs> I mean, I had bl I was blind through the third and fourth rank at the end of the game. It was, it was horrible. I couldn't see anything. Sunlight on the dashboard alright so you've got to be an expert really I think to play white in these lines Zlatko Alinchic my friend he's a big time Fianchetto uh, Benoni player but I mean he has it all worked out to a science like 30 moves deep you know and you get to these weird, really weird like precarious positions where black's pieces are like all over you you know and, and then you're just hanging on by like a thread I mean, that doesn't seem fun to me. You know, I don't want to like memorize 30 moves so I get a position where all the black's pieces are like hovering around like vultures and uh, and I have to find precise moves not to be worse. Self. Self preservation would, would make it like sound better not to play the white side of this Fianchetto bank, um, Benoni. You'd think like the Fianchetto Benoni would be pretty solid for white. I think the main problem is that this bishop just is like inhibited. I mean, it has no activity at all. You know, you're just blocked by the pawn on d5. Bob, you're close to getting timed out again. You're being misogynistic again. 
All right. Something about knight a6 is not the normal move. Right. The main line is a6, a4, knight bd7, knight c4, and then either knight b6 or knight e5. I know that much. So knight a6 is some kind of like sideline. But it may be concretely like bad for black, no? Now I'm all over the d6 pawn. And he doesn't have 98 coverage. Yeah, I know it's a6. I actually tried to play this for black briefly about 20 plus years ago. I had a game with like a 1900 and I drew with the black pieces. And there was a guy, I remember he was from like Denmark or something. He was really legitimately 1900. And he was one of the lowest rated players I've drawn in the last 20 years probably. I was rated 2400 US and he was 1900 US and I drew. I was pretty upset about it. Okay, so knight h5 looks like a legit move, except for the fact that it's bad. Can you really justify this? He's stopping knight, excuse me, he's stopping bishop f4, but other than that the move doesn't have much point, right? So I could just go knight b5. That's the weak point. We're going to go for it. Um, maybe he has some tactics. Bishop d7. Sacking his pawn. He has bishop f8, of course. Tal style. Tal played the black side of the modern Benoni. He wasn't afraid to play the occasional bishop f8. Actually, you have to here. So now what? Is this some theory for real? e4 e5 so e4 f5 at least we don't have to worry about the g4 square which is so commonly a problem knight c7 simply christians can be a little melodramatic is yoga even healthy satanic well I mean I, I mean we're just talking about like modern modern like mainstream you know yoga I don't mean like the religion or whatever <clears throat> all right knight c7 here we're on all kinds of weird topics today do we have enough Beef steak tartar. Tatar. Tartar or tatar? I've never been able to, to, to do it, man. It's like the biggest gourmet food. One of the biggest gourmet foods in Hungary is the beef steak tartar. And I couldn't eat that, man. I, I'm sorry. I'm a huge. I'm a huge lover of, like, you know, steaks and hamburgers and stuff like that. But I can't eat that. I just can't do it the raw hamburger on a plate with some ketchup and, and raw egg. Mmm. Sounds delicious. Okay, B6. No, I mean, I've seen it. You know, I just never had it. I couldn't eat it. F4. Are we overextending ourselves? Gotta do something. No, the Tatar, of course, is an ethnic group. Tartar. The problem is that like a lot of Hungarian restaurants will... Maybe not just Hungarian, but I mean, I've seen a lot of restaurants mess up the spelling. I'm not sure if it's Tatar or Tartar, because there's like Tartar sauce. Tatar. It's Tatar beefsteak. Tatar beefsteak. But it's, it's like very commonly misspelled in restaurants and stuff. K4 
ketchup and raw eggs and raw beef all mashed up together. Maybe you throw in a little Worcestershire sauce. I don't know. It's just gross, dude. Nezbedinov. Was he Tatar? All right. We're running into really weird conversations, guys. I've got time for at least one more game, possibly two. If this one finishes quickly. F5, E5. We're ready to cave Black's position totally with E5. Bishop D7, I was thinking. At least you buy yourself a moment. Yeah, F6 is like last resort. G4. I can't calculate, I'm too tired. Bishop f3, certainly not a bad move, just keeping him confined. Is it even a threat though? Like, could I possibly maybe not be threatening bishop takes h? Now we're gonna trap his bishop on h3. With g4, king f2, king g3. If you want to be tricky, you can play, I guess, king f2 here. But I feel like black is strategically screwed now. Maybe a6, trying to bust out over there. Maybe I'm playing this too slowly. Queen c7, I'm not sure what that does. He wants to transfer it to f7. Here. White is awfully well centralized. This is just the sword of Damocles. Diced ribeye. If you had that. You're at a you're at a certain a certain Turkish steakhouse with a certain dictator, Bob. All right, Queen F seven, very fancy restaurant. Bob was there the other day. We have pictures of him with Maduro. Right, Bob. You were the third guest. I don't know what to do here. I've been kind of waiting to pull the trigger on something. Trapping that bishop on. He can always stop the trap with like h5 though at any moment. I was wanted to try. I think I did try snails once. That's good. I'm going to lose on time now? Seriously? Man, that's annoying. He's hanging on. I mean, I don't see a clear way to put him away. We got pressure, but but no no finishing blow. <clears throat> Where are you? It's so super early morning in the U.S. You have U.S. accent. I live in Budapest. That's why we're we're talking of beef steak Tatar. Um. Not not regularly something I eat though. I am American. We're, we're taking over the world. He just blundered F6. It's all it's all a plot. I'm, I'm really a spy. All right, Chestosterone just couldn't keep his focus here. But I mean, objectively, it doesn't seem like he's lost. Just in a very unpleasant position. The computer will give him like a negative two positional disadvantage. That's exactly like what typically we see and then and then it's just like yeah but i don't know how to finish him off um not that easy to finish him off but it's also not that easy to find moves for black so tough position um if you go back there in the opening as i mentioned i mean i think that knight a6 is secondary actually it's the najadik the fourth the fourth best move according to theory so 
a6 is the main line, knight on bd7 is played, and sometimes b6. So knight a6 is relatively bad. Um, Flutka is the healthiest booze. Thank you, Baba. Can I quote you on that? That'll be that'll be my new my new argument. Infiltrating every stream I watch. Um, you're even a sub. Who are you talking to? Oh, wait, cheesy, cheesy. I don't know if I ever noticed you were a sub. Thank you for that, guys. We have time for like one more game. Um, if it's really quick, like a second one. Inner vents challenged me to a rated game, but I don't really play rated games. I apologize for existing, good sir. <laughs> okay, guys, this was supposed to be a weird Wednesday, unusual stream where I play stuff I don't normally play so we'll play the dunst opening just for fun cheesy cheesy thanks for subscribing d5 clearly the best move against knight to c3 and I, I'll do anything in my power to avoid playing the London system or any kind of relative of the London system so we're gonna play knight f3 and it's a, a two knights tango with colors reversed so is JC gifted him a sub Awesome, JC. Was this something that just occurred? Is that the cheese emoji? That's awesome. So S villain just developing his pieces here. I'm basically like playing as if I'm black and it would seem kind of weird to avoid an exchange of knights here with less space. Principle dictates you have to exchange pieces when you have less space. So unfortunately, I have to trade pieces. Seems to come with weird topics and Bob arguments. Bob is always, I wouldn't call them arguments. I think he purposely tries to incite hatred and violence. No, I mean, I wouldn't be that extreme, but I do think that he tries to provoke people. All right, Bob is a troublemaker, but it's not just on Wednesdays, Pichu. He's, he's a troublemaker every time he comes on the stream. It's not exclusive to Wednesdays. C3, we need to destroy the center. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm only equal when I make this move here. I'm not better. What can you do? Um, he's been relatively well behaved today. I warned him about, you know, the yoga comments he was going in the wrong direction as as you know everyone might be tempted to do c3 well I don't know do you try to maintain the center I think that would be a mistake here with c5 but it's possible the end game is um, not not really the idea here so I feel like I played the English opening or something why do I feel like I played the English opening here Undermined his center. If I play e4, it's just like a field day for hyper minor pressure on the center. He'll have f5 at some point, maybe a lever. Or a lever, if you prefer. e4. Bishop e7. Maybe like bishop e5 check. All right, it's risky, but we're gonna take the center for lack of a better plan. We try to induce c6, a kind of useless move for black, taking the pressure off my center. And then what, like bishop c4? Interesting, so he doesn't, he doesn't fear queen a4 because of presumably a6, bishop c6, b5, which like destroys my position. So he's able to just do this with impunity, in other words. Wonderful. Well, at least he's not threatening to take my pawn, but I have put my bishop on a stupid square in the interim. Is a6 a problem? If 
feels a lot like the Grunfeld or something like that, except it's not. Just structurally for white, it's like a Grunfeld. The far most, well, this is by far the most G-rated chess stream. That's impossible. It's the only one that doesn't ban Bob. Which is interesting because it probably has the oldest average viewer. I try to just keep it, you know, G-rated because I want to appeal to all different age levels, you know. If I was aiming for mature audiences, Bob, I would definitely, like, curse and, and make, you know, profane comments all the time. C5, A4 is probably going to be necessary here. I think this is a useful move to keep him off of B5. Because if he plays B5, he has that really nice queenside majority that he can put to use. So A4 is probably worthwhile. Obviously, white has more space. It looks like an EF Karo for black against the white side of the Grunfeld for white. It could also be a semi Tarash, lots of things. Sounds like you guys watch a lot of different streams. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to any more games, guys. This is probably it. I've got to disappear at 12.30. Budapest time. Difficult to, um, it's difficult to make a plan now. You know, we've got our pieces generally in their best squares. I don't know where the A rook should go. I don't have a direct attack. His pawn on F6 is actually really seeming like, like a really seemingly important asset defensively. Sorry for the high-pitched squeaking sound I was making accidentally. Guys, I have no idea how to play this position. It's really pissing me off. Um, and I'm going to run out of time if I don't just start making random moves, apparently. H3. Just so I don't get mated in the back rank at some later date. This is a very logical move here by my opponent. Okay, we'll just make like a useless move. Bishop d2, just connecting my rooks. And maybe I'm already too slow. Queen b1 was an idea that I, I can employ now, is an idea that I can employ now for the first time. Rook b8 almost crosses that plan. You could play queen e2 on the a6 pawn now as well. But just like bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, f5. I'm running out of ideas, guys. He's just making quick moves. What about an ink bullet game? I gotta go. This is ink bullet. Is that what you said? Oh, no, I can't be playing any bullet. I've got a tradition to maintain. It's not only the G-rated stream, but it's like the one stream where nobody plays bullet chess. I'm not opposed to the R-rated stream, Bob, but I just want to kind of keep this one, you know, behaved and, and friendly. And I want to include include the the junior players and not be a bad influence like you, like you are. I'm not saying that it's wrong to be a bad influence, you know. Being evil, I mean, is it my place to? criticize you for being evil e5 bishop takes f3 shredding my king side that's not an option I'm going to get to the point where I'm just moving back and forth soon I think I have no clue what I'm doing I have no plan I'm just sitting here maintaining my center. Black also. Bishop f8. I was expecting knight f8, knight e6, or knight f8, knight g6. So bishop f8 was, was a surprise. You, my voice sounds a little sick. 
Um, I do have seasonal allergies, but I'm not sick. Thank you. That's an interesting, interesting question. This guy doesn't play like 1700. I'm saying that kind of thing all the time, Pichu. But I don't think you play like 2000 either. I think that everybody, you know, everybody seems to play better. Um, yesterday, Bombas won my Tuesday tournament with 2033. But he plays like a FIDE master, you know. So I can't really, I can't really put people on ratings anymore. His speed is, is very solid. This is an excellent move by Black, by the way. D8. Setting up tactics with 95. Now he has like CD or even 95 right away. Of course, if he plays 95, I'll just take with a knight and then like push D5 with a protected passer. He could play CD, CD, knight, C5, which would be a lot different. That's probably answerable. That's a serious problem, actually. I might not have a clue what's happening there. It's a Grunfeld tactic, CD, CD, Knight, C5. Now he may have finally gone under by way of tactics here. I'm not sure this even, even works. I was thinking e5, but I guess I'm just letting him cross over. My king side is going to get shredded again. What do I actually have here? Knight g5, maybe? I think we got to go for it. Then he has an unbelievable resource there as well. Wow. He didn't call it. I'm going to lose on time, though. What am I doing here? I have no clue. Some sort of positional advantage. Take on f3, but I guess I'll just live with that. His pieces aren't very active. The bishop on f8, knight on d7. Well, he did that. Okay, I think I'm a fine. I'm fine here. He just has a pawn on f7, destroying him. Meanwhile, my king is relatively safe in reality. Yeah, unfortunately, maybe even my move didn't do anything. Let's see. Could be some problems. What are you kidding me? He has a perpetual. Dude, you had king there? King me. You had king f7 in that position? I guess it didn't matter. You're down a rook anyway. Crazy game, man. I mean, was I worse at some point in this game? Or was it just really annoying and hard to make progress? Anyway, that's going to end it for today, guys. 12.30, time to disappear. Knight f8. I had a mate with knight f8. Okay, I can't under-promote because I need time to do that. I've got the automatic, the auto... I have the auto queen turned on, I think. The last time I tried to under-promote, something weird happened. I'm just curious if he was ever better, if we look through this game with the engine. I'm seriously going to get a good, a good Centipon loss? Wow. 
And she's claiming that I played this game well. Three inaccuracies, 12 sent upon loss. By the time that I get to the last game, I'm usually playing well. And my early games um, in the streams are typically disastrous. I'm very lucky I didn't lose today. I had a draw with Pichu, I think I won the other games. Anyway, like lots of bad positions where I, where I survived. Anyway, thanks for watching and, and subscribing, guys. Tomorrow night, um, I'll send you guys a message who are subscribers. We're gonna do the subscriber stream tomorrow night. It'll be, uh, it'll be 6.30 p.m. Game analysis with subscribers. So just submit a game for subscriber to the stream and uh, you can do that via, via Lee Chess. Thanks, Soltigo, for coming, and I know that it's late for you. Thanks, JCS, also, man. You've been very helpful. Anyway, um, we'll be back tomorrow night with the subscriber stream. Please support the stream. You can do so by, by donating, um, donating bits. You can subscribe to the stream. Different tiers. The Panda emote, if you subscribe to Pier 2. Tier 2, Pier 2. Um, and also, please add me... Um, on Lee Chess, uh, and follow me on Lee Chess, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I do add all the streams to the YouTube channel, so hopefully slowly that will grow as well, and uh, eventually one day I'm going to add some more content over there. So I'll see you guys later, and I'll see you on Thursday night. The Panda, for the Panda's been, Panda's been nursing his, his hangover. He had too much bamboo beer last night. Oh, my head hurts. Bob, you said this is a, a G rated stream but actually you know I had a little too much last night so it's not that G rated this this wasn't ginger beer Bob this was bamboo beer it's pretty nasty I'll see you guys later bye bye